welcome back to the channel so i've had a little bit of time off i feel better for it but i thought i'd come back with quite a casual chatty video for you guys if you're a long time viewer of mine then you're gonna know that i've clearly lost my sojo or should i say i had lost my sojo back in the beginning of the channel i was making garment after garment after garment and I completely exhausted myself. If you add into that my chronic illness, then it just became impossible. You guys have been asking me for actual sewing garments rather than just talking about sewing. And as much as I've wanted to make you happy, I just didn't have it in me to do it. It was, it was exhausting me. So I thought I'd share my experience with you. I hope, I can't say for certain I'm coming out the other side, but I certainly hope I am. But I have six tips that I think will be beneficial. If you've lost your sojo, or you're finding you're not wanting to sew as much as usual, then this might help you, it really might. I also have some other videos related to this, which I will link down below. So the first tip I learned was that I needed to recognize that I wasn't enjoying sewing. When I started to sew maybe seven, nearly eight years ago now, I absolutely felt in love with it, head over heels in love with it. I just wanted to sew at all times. I'd go to work and I would dream about sewing. I'd get home and I wouldn't have enough time to sew. And it was just a passion, a complete and utter passion. I dreamed of the day I could stay home and sew all day. Be careful what you wish for, because I got that wish and I was able to stay home and sew. I started the channel. I was sewing for the channel. I was sewing for myself. I was doing test garments for designers as well. I was sewing, 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 and I crashed and burned. It was around the time actually that I made the Sherpa vest. If you are an old viewer of mine, you'll remember that video. I kind of done that one. Well, it was a test, but also because it was a nice, easy one. And at that point I was burnt out. I wasn't ready to admit to myself that I was burnt out and that I was, I had lost my sojo. I didn't really even believe in losing your sojo at that point. I convinced myself that I stopped sewing so much because I was just making things for the channel and then they were not getting worn. If you remember at the end of last year, I did a massive declutter of my wardrobe and got rid of pretty much most of it because it was either ill-fitting or I never wore it. And I just saw it as a total waste. And I still, I hold that view today. What I wasn't admitting to myself was that I had stopped enjoying the sewing. And that can happen with anything that becomes your job, can't it? So, you know, whatever you enjoy, if you have to do it for a job, then you lose that spark for it, I think. I'd say to you, if you're finding that you're not sewing as much as you want, or perhaps you just, you can't find the project that you want to sew, so you're not sewing, maybe you're procrastinating you know it might be a clue if you're wanting to do the washing up before you're wanting to sew there might be a clue there that you're not enjoying the sewing unless you really love housework in which case why did you take up sewing because you know you'll have no time for it if this is you and you're finding you're sewing a lot less than normal or maybe you haven't sewn at all for months and months and you're only just realizing it now then it's time to acknowledge that you're not actually enjoying the sewing. Which takes me on to my next point. So even though I wasn't ready to fully admit I had lost my sojo around the time I made the Sherpa vest, I did still do what my next tip is, and that is to take a step back from the sewing. I was finding the videos where, if you watch any of my actual sewing videos, you'll see how full on they are. They are very detailed videos and they were completely exhausting me. If you think about making quite a complex pattern, so say you're making a jacket, I made the Sienna jacket by Closet Core. Imagine making something like that, but having to film every little step from different angles, and then once that's all done, you have to spend like 30 odd hours piecing that together, editing it to make it digestible for an audience, and then publishing it. and all the work that comes around publishing, then you'll understand that it became overwhelming. 
and so taking a step back was really really beneficial my step back ended up being a little bit too much of a step back at that point when i was feeling completely overwhelmed then taking a step back was so so important for my mental health sometimes it is important to take a step back from the things that are making us unhappy even things that we think we're happy about but we're not happy about it could be so beneficial to take that time to reflect and ask yourself what do you enjoy doing and perhaps try something different for a little while see if your lack of enthusiasm for sewing is something that's going to stay with you or maybe you just needed a break, a refresh, but you won't know unless you take that break. And that is what I found. So this next point is part of the last point really, and that is to take time to reflect because we can, we can stop sewing and we can take a break from it, but life gets in the way. Unless we actively take time to reflect we're not going to benefit from that space. Something that could be really beneficial to do if this is you, and it's something I didn't do, but I think I would have benefited from it, is to ask myself, what do I love about sewing and what do I hate about sewing? Make a list if need be, and that will show you clearly what is going on with you. Additionally, we can ask ourselves what emotions we're feeling around sewing and where those emotions are coming from. I'm certainly not this introspective in my own sewing and it's not something I did but with hindsight I really do believe it would be helpful. You can ask yourself are you uninspired? Are you lacking in time? Are you burnt out? All of these things are going to really help you to understand what is going on with you. The most important question when we're reflecting is to ask ourselves what will it take to get our love of sewing back? And is it possible to get our lover sewing back? So for me, while I was taking a break, although I wasn't reflecting quite this much, and I probably should have been, I didn't really think that I'd fallen out of love with it totally. I felt that I was burnt out. I didn't have the energy to keep sewing like I was sewing. And because I was sewing so much, it made me, the feelings I felt with hindsight were, I felt anxious when I had to sew and it made me not want to sew at all. Even though the odd garment here or there would not have caused me any harm, but I just didn't want to sew. I was in this weird place where I had a sewing channel, so I needed to sew for work, but I didn't want to sew. It wasn't a very nice place to be in. So the next point I have to share with you is once you've taken a break and you've reflected, maybe start looking for some inspiration. I know for me, window shopping is a fantastic way of doing that. I will look at all the patterns in my catalogue and I've got hundreds and hundreds of PDFs and I will not feel inspired by any of it. I will not want to sew with those patterns, but I might see a new pattern that has come out and it looks absolutely wonderful on the model. Well, that's a whole other issue, but it might do and it will inspire me. It might make me think, yes, I want to sew that and I want to sew it right now so I can then get that pattern, get some fabric and sew. Or it might be that buying some new fabric will really get my juices flowing for sewing again. My juices are flowing for sewing. But if budget is an issue and this would restrict you from doing those things, then maybe shop your stash. Get your stash of fabrics out and have a good rummage through and try and remember the reasons that you fell in love with that fabric in the first place. Likewise with patterns have a look at patterns, maybe look through your wardrobe, see what you need or want. Maybe you've got an event coming up and you want to sew a dress for it. And that might just spark your creativity and your inspiration into, like even if not actually sewing, thinking about sewing again. If you're enjoying this content and you'd like to see more like it, do hit that subscribe button down below because I bring content like this to you very, very often when I'm not having a break. Well, let's get back into it. So on from that last point, the next point is to choose an easy project. If you're in this position where you have lost your sojo and you don't want to sew, 
no one in that situation is ever going to jump back in with a great big project like a coat or something like that why would you do that you just wouldn't you're going to want a nice easy project you really are depending on your skill level maybe a t-shirt or a simple shift dress maybe a skirt maybe not even clothes at all maybe you want to sew a tote bag or a cushion cover or something like that sometimes a really small project like a cushion cover will help you get back in the game because i know one of the things that really stopped me with sewing well stopped me in my tracks i should say is all the things that you have to do before you get to actually sewing we have in our mind that oh yes we can get grab a pattern we can grab the fabric cut it out and start sewing and as you know especially as a plus size that just is not possible we have to assess the pattern we have to either trace it or cut it out or download it and put it together we have to make the changes to the pattern then we have to do a twirl we have to make more changes we have to do another twirl possibly and then do more changes then we cut the proper fabric out and then we get to sewing and by the time we get to sewing it's completely and utterly exhausting so if you have a pattern that you've already done all the adjustments for you know it fits you well i would jump back in with that or like i say maybe a non-garment sewing pattern or maybe just try a t-shirt a jersey garment that is a lot more forgiving in terms of fitting but whatever you do choose something really simple something that you can whip up in an hour I know when there's a garment I can whip up in an hour I am very very happy about that because of the dopamine you get at the end of your project knowing that I made that that will really really help you because then you might want to go on to a bigger project next time and the next point to share with you is to just start sewing I think when we don't sew for the longest of times or even if we don't sew for a month or a few weeks we can lose our confidence with sewing. I think when we're beginners and we start to sew, it takes up quite a lot to build our confidence up. And then if we stop sewing, it's almost like we lose that confidence and we need to regain it. And the only way to regain it is to start sewing. I know that there are some viewers who watch my videos who don't sew because they want to sew garments, but they just haven't started and they're putting it off and I think that's probably a lack of confidence in their skills and it's the same when we're going back to sewing after a period of time off sometimes we just have to push ourselves and that's what I did last week I'd posted a question it was either a question or a poll on my community tab by the way if you don't watch my community tab do watch it because I do give lots of information there about up and coming videos and I ask for your participation in the decisions I make for my channel there so do check back on my community post you go to my channel page there's lots of tabs so you've got home videos playlists etc one of them is community posts uh, check that and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about at any given time anyway I had done this poll uh, or question asking you about uh, free patterns and whether you want them and it generated a really interesting conversation I was getting more comments again saying people want to see me actually sewing and I did address this in a video previously which I'll put here so you can see where I just said I don't have the energy for sewing which was not a lie I definitely didn't have the energy for sewing so when I get those comments about we want to see actual sewing puts a pressure on me because of the amount of work involved with my chronic health it becomes a very very overwhelming and in some cases makes me not want to film videos so I've just got the urge to sew there and then I don't know what happened I was pretty much laid up as well I had very little energy that day so I found a pattern that I already owned that was already printed out so that took away the job of printing a pdf and putting a pdf together i thought that i could just cut it out and we're good to go however i did underestimate myself and there was a little bit of work but i made a start i started sewing the twirl and then the needle broke and i couldn't do any more but i made a start and that made me feel really good about myself now 
that video you're gonna hear all about that in my next video but I made a start and it happened and you can too so don't despair that if you really don't want to sew that you're never going to want to sew again because it just won't happen but sometimes we need to help ourselves along in the process to get back to that point where we're enjoying the hobby that we're doing whatever the hobby is it might not be sewing it could be something else so i'm going to leave the video there i hope you enjoyed it and you found value if you did find extra value in this please consider purchasing a coffee for me link will be down below give the video a like subscribe if you haven't and i will catch you in the next one happy sewing bye for now